1963 marked one of the most important dates of the United States Civil Rights Movement. On this day, only 58 years ago, civil rights leaders Bayard Rustin, Philip Randolph, and Martin Luther King Jr. came together to organize the March on Washington. June 28, 2020 was one of the most important dates, depending on who you ask, in my hometown's history. On this day, after weeks of planning and organizing, the Middletown spread love, not hate, Black Lives Matter rally finally took place. Last year, I graduated from the Middletown Township Public School District in the town where I've lived for my entire life. Growing up here as a person of color, I not only experienced racism myself, but had seen and heard so many others suffer from discrimination too, just for looking, loving, or believing differently. Whether it be because of the hurtful microaggressions towards minority students, racist slurs thrown around in the hallways, or even just the fact that we don't learn enough history about people of color. This past year, I realized that my old school district was far from perfect, and I was frustrated about it. In light of the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests, I couldn't stop thinking about this one time in my seventh grade health class when I was doing a group project covering HIV and AIDS. One student in my group took all the other kids aside and told them that because I was black, I must be from Africa and have AIDS, so everyone should stop talking to me. This really got to middle school me, and from that point on, I bottled up the embarrassment I felt. Each time I saw or heard someone get discriminated against or treated badly for looking different, I felt like I was in that terrible moment again. For a long time, I suppressed my feelings of discomfort and insecurity and hesitated to speak out about it because I was scared. I was scared of the backlash, scared to offend someone, and scared to be perceived as the angry black girl. I was afraid to come to terms with the fact that my silence was enabling these behaviors. I realized that if I wanted to help make progressive changes in society, I would have to start advocating for it in my own community first. It was the moment that I saw some students at my school had organized a protest to stop our in-person graduation from being canceled that really changed my perspective. I didn't think in-person graduation was that big of a deal, and it bothered me that people were putting their energy into protesting for a ceremony rather than fighting for the national loss of Black lives. In an unbelievable and disgusting, as some Facebook moms called it, yet unapologetically frank video I posted on my Instagram, I addressed my frustration. I finally spoke up about the issue of racism in my school district. Although this video message was directed to a relatively small group of people at the time, it spread to thousands within and outside of my town in only a matter of days. It gained national media attention, and with that, even more criticism and overwhelmingly scary and nasty remarks. However, the positive responses completely outweighed the negative. So many people reached out to express their support, and many others shared their own stories and experiences with discrimination. For many people, this was the first time they had ever been confronted with social justice issues, and it opened their eyes and inspired them to change. As I was taking in these different responses and listening to what other people had to say, I realized that the most effective way to address racism, bigotry, and bias would be to educate people. As I once said in a speech I gave at the town protest in June, an anti-bullying video or diversity assembly just isn't going to cut it anymore. As a society, we have to stop ignoring the disparities that are built into every aspect of our culture, especially in education. Young people of color deserve to feel empowered, proud, and comfortable in their own skin, at school or anywhere else. The first goal of an anti-racist education is to change curriculums to be more inclusive and representative of people of color and their histories. Next is to offer programs and resources that encourage and uplift minority students who too often don't have equal opportunities. 
Last is to provide diversity training for teachers so they are aware of the perils of racism and can better support their students who are struggling because of it. The hatred within our society is taught and we have to make sure that our school environments are teaching people to unlearn these hateful, divisive behaviors. We must ensure that our classrooms do not reflect the ignorance that some students may be subject to at home. A petition written up by a group of Middletown students and alumni called for our Board of Education to adopt an anti-bias, anti-racist curriculum. The sheer number of signatures amassed for this petition by the end of the protest was an extremely encouraging and positive sign that change was possible and change was coming. Together, the protest, the petition, and the passion of all those who supported it finally brought this goal of improving education in my old school district to life. A group of brilliant students from another high school in my town reached out to me about their plan to provide an anti-racist educational resources to our district's administrators to be utilized in future years. Working together as the Middletown Social Justice Committee, we created a comprehensive document demanding our school to do better when tackling the issue of racism and discrimination in general. This document included lesson plans about ending Eurocentrism, whitewashing, and white supremacy in the American public education system. It also highlighted the previously erased or overlooked histories of Indigenous, Asian, Latinx, and African people. And this document wasn't just limited to fighting racial discrimination. It also included resources to educate students about issues like sexism, ableism, genocide, anti-Semitism, homophobia, Islamophobia, and xenophobia. One section even focused on the issue of sugarcoating Thanksgiving, and it provided educational resources that could help teach elementary school students about Thanksgiving from the Native American perspective, rather than from the settler's point of view. Our committee met several times with the Board of Education and Superintendent to review these efforts to decolonize and revitalize our curriculums and communities. We planted the seed for a future anti-racist education system rooted in inclusivity, compassion, and understanding rather than hate and division. But despite these productive discussions and all the progress we made over the summer, Middletown has still taken a step backwards in these past few months. A teacher was heavily criticized for putting up a sign in her classroom that advocated for human rights and kindness because it was considered too political. An elementary school principal put Trump 2020 stickers on Halloween candy and posted it to the school's social media page. And a teacher expressed her support for the domestic terrorist capital insurrection to middle school students. Clearly, there is so much more work to be done. After revisiting much of what happened in the past year, I understood that as much as I wanted to make a difference, real change just doesn't happen overnight by the actions of one person. Real change comes from people redefining their thinking and acknowledging their ignorance. In a book I recently read for school titled Ignorance, How It Drives Science, the author Stuart Firestein talks about how we should stop being afraid of our own ignorance. By humbling ourselves and understanding the limitations of our knowledge, we can become more open and understanding. Rather than invalidating the experiences of people with backgrounds we're not familiar with and being close-minded, we can empathize with one another and find unity in our shared uncertainty. For example, instead of saying something like, I'm not racist, I don't see color, we must accept that people look different and can be treated differently because of it. We must genuinely try to listen and learn from one another, especially when having difficult conversations about racism or injustice. We must recognize our privilege where it exists and make sure we're using it to amplify underprivileged voices rather than silence them. The issue of systemic racism, specifically in the education system, is so much greater than just me or you. Because of this, the significant change we need to fight it must start small, with little things like improving the way we communicate with each other or how we treat ourselves. We are living through a historical social revolution rooted in self-awareness and a change in mindset. 
we have to take accountability and responsibility for ourselves and learn not to be afraid to call out ignorance when it's around us. Taking a leap of faith and speaking up in your community, your school, or even in your own home can help stop racism from just continuing to be tolerated. You are totally capable of making a difference just by changing the way you think and sharing that open-mindedness with the people around you. Thank you.